So hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Terry and this video here is mainly for me because I want to test out some different picture profiles here. And as many of you might know out there, this here is the Sony a7 IV. I got this camera a few months ago and I absolutely love it. The footage from this thing is absolutely beautiful. And like many out there that switched to a professional camera body like this here, whenever they found out this thing can shoot an S-Log3, which of course is what, which is what you're seeing now, I went ahead and made the jump to that type of workflow because one, I've always heard amazing things about S-Log. I never actually have worked with it before. And I figured that, well, hey, you know what, if I'm gonna be doing weddings and stuff professionally here this spring and whatnot, if I ever work with another, you know, videographer or somebody like that in a professional setting that might have another Sony camera or a camera that's capable of shooting in, in a log format of some kind, that, hey, I might wanna learn how to use S-Log3 on my a7 IV in case I ever have to send the raw footage to someone else for editing, you know what I mean? And you know, I love S-Log3. As a matter of fact, it's, it's what you're looking at right here. I have a LUT applied to it, along with a conversion LUT to um, Rec. 709. And I think it looks pretty good. You know, there's so much versatility that S-Log3 has to offer. You get a lot more dynamic range out of it than no picture profile. And for the most part, I think it looks really nice. Now, the one thing I had to learn to do with this here is that it goes against everything that I've learned about you know, exposure, setting up lighting for filming like this here. And that is whenever you wanna use S-Log3, I'm actually shooting at the second native ISO on my camera here, which is 3200 because it's 640, it's technically underexposed. And with S-Log3, you wanna overexpose by at least 1.7 to two stops over, okay? That's a little counterintuitive, I know, but the way that S-Log3 handles highlight roll off and shadows and all that stuff, you actually wanna overexpose a little bit so you can correct it in post later. But there's actually another picture profile built in this camera that a lot of the older Sony's mirrorless cameras have now as well, thanks to a firmware update, and that is S-Cinetone. Now, personally, I've never had the chance to really use it because I sort of kind of forget that this camera has it built in because I was so focused on S-Log3. So this is what S-Log3 looks like ungraded. And again, this is what it looks like right now with that custom LUT that I prepared for it. So one of the things that I've heard about as Cinetone that's pretty cool is that it's a what you see is what you get picture profile. So essentially what you see here on the preview screen is exactly what you're gonna get. And there's no fancy way to expose for it just as long as your multimeter here on camera says zero or it's leveled out to where it's not underexposed or overexposed by any amount of stops, you should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to that picture profile right Right now and we'll compare the two. All right, everybody, and now this is S-Cinetone. This is straight out of camera. The only thing I'm gonna do to this here is hold up a white balance card here, which should already be looking somewhat decent, at least I hope so. And the ISO is set to 200 and the multimeter is actually zeroed out, so this should technically be exposed properly, but on the Screen here, it looks a little bit too dark, but let me know what you guys think here, okay? And if I think it's too dark in post, I'll raise it up just a little bit here, okay? Now, the thing about S-Cinetone is that it's essentially a what you see is what you get picture profile. And if you're somebody like me that just does some run and gun vlogging, YouTube style stuff, these talking head videos like this here, this picture profile might make a lot more sense to use rather than someone doing a professional shoot somewhere like a wedding where they need all that dynamic range, especially if they're shooting in like a lot of low light situations that S-Log3 would actually be able to give them rather than a baked in picture profile like S-Cinetone. Now that's not saying that you can't extract more out of this picture profile, but you're sort of kind of stretching it a little bit more than it might be able to provide. You know what I mean? And again, the thing that I really like about this is that, again, it's a what you see is what you get. So you're able to shoot with a much lower ISO to theoretically give you a much cleaner image than what you would have to use with S-Log3, unless you're shooting at one of the native ISOs. That's a dual native ISO, one at 640 and one at 3200 in S-Log3. And in that last section that you saw shooting in S-Log3, to make sure I overexposed properly, I had to shoot at ISO 3200. Now again, that is the, the highest native ISO for S-Log3, so it should have looked clean, but 
I'm the kind of person that I like to keep my ISO down as low as I possibly can to just know that in camera, I'm getting a nice clean image for you guys out there, okay? And again, ISO 200, F1.8, uh, my multimeter is zeroed out, so that's pretty good. And again, I'm not gonna do any kind of color correction, color grading, whatever. Only thing I did was I held up a white balance card here to hopefully, again, everything looks good for you all out there. Now, a big benefit to S-Cinetone here, you shouldn't really have to do any kind of major color grading. You shouldn't have to spend a lot of time correcting the footage because the, the colors that you see here are essentially baked in to the video that you're watching right now. Again, I might tweak this a little bit in post, but if I do anything, I'll put up a little card here to show you all what I did. And uh, yeah, like I think this is gonna be kind of nice. The thing that I love about Ascinetone is that I can edit videos so much quicker because it's just it just looks like this straight out of camera. To get this same kind of look with S-Log3, first I have to apply a conversion LUT to take it from S-Log3 to 709, then I have to apply another LUT to that that I already custom made that saves me a lot of time to get the kind of look that you all are used to seeing here. But with this kind of picture profile here, I can just run and gun, shoot what I wanna shoot, and I'm good to go. Uh, that's not to say though that I think S-Log3 is a bad picture profile, no. The reason why I still use it a lot, even for this YouTube channel here, where I'm just sitting here literally doing nothing besides talking to a camera here, is because I wanna get used to editing that type of footage to where if I'm ever shooting with somebody else on a shoot, and I ask them, hey, do you want this shot in log for, for later? Because like, let's say I'm not doing the editing, I can just send it to somebody else and then they can do the editing for their own style, or if I'm helping somebody do a shoot that they're already paid to do, I can just say, hey, do you want this stuff shot in log? And if they say, yeah, for editing later, not a problem. I know how to overexpose properly. I know how to set my camera up for it, and boom, we're off to the races, we're good to go. But for, I think about 95% of people, especially if you're doing stuff like this here, talking head style content, or even if you just wanna move up to a professional camera like this here and you want that nice look out of camera without necessarily wanting to learn how to color grade, how to color correct, how, how to properly expose stuff right in camera, I think that s would be a pretty darn good bet. And again, S-Log3 is incredible because you're able to get so much more dynamic range out of this camera. And once you learn how to color grade it, color correct it, all that stuff, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It really, really does. But this video here was mainly for me because I wanted to see the difference between the two picture profiles and maybe get y'all's opinion out there. Like, do you guys and gals prefer to use S-Log3 or a log format or if there's a built-in picture profile on the camera of your choice out there, which one do you like and why do you use it? But again, this is mainly for, for me for comparison purposes. I just thought I would upload it here to the channel to see what everybody else thinks. So yeah, if you wanna see more content like this here on the channel, do me a huge favor, get subscribed, give this video a like, that would greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys and gals next time.